We're going to hear from Christina Ellinson. She is the country contact for WDI in Norway. She uh, is being investigated by the police after Amnesty International Norway complained about a tweet saying a man can't be a mother. Thank you so much for talking to us, Christina. There's so much publicity about this and this is such a significant moment and you're being so brave and creative and brilliant about it, but um, over to you. I do not believe that men who say they are women, girls, mothers or lesbians are what they claim to be. Uh, and, and it turns out in Norway, uh, making a statement like that is considered uh, is po potentially considered a hate crime. And so I'm currently being investigated for having made statements on Twitter. Uh, after Norway passed a law that came into effect this Jan January last year, uh, which uh, gave the concept of gendered identities uh, legal protection in our Norwegian hate crime laws. So I'm just going to try to explain a little bit about my background and how I ended up in this situation. So my background is that in 2008, I finished my studies in critical theory. And at the time I was about 20 years old, like in my early twenties. Uh, and I thought, uh, well, you know, critical theory and queer theory, you know, it, it really, to me, it was really interesting. Um, and then 10, 10 years later, I decided to do uh, another degree uh, and this time in engineering in uh, biotechnology. Uh, so I had then two different kind of approaches to like how society would approach biology. And then one afternoon I had, uh, I had an afternoon to spare. Uh, and then uh, I thought, well, how's things going in critical theory? I'll just, you know, how's, how are, you know, what's the discourses? What's the mood? <laughs> So I went on a little Google search, and then what I discovered was that women were being censored all over the internet for saying uh, there's a difference between sex and gender, that Jessica and Eve couldn't have a period because he was male, and that lesbians everywhere were saying men can't be lesbians. And the whole thing just seemed completely bizarre to me. So I started investigating and then I was just, I was just completely shocked. I was just completely shocked because the theories that I've been sort of, you know, I would, I've looked at, at, at the theories I'd studied in 2008 that I thought was kind of like interesting theoretical approaches was being put into practice. And women were complaining about it everywhere and nobody seemed to care, nobody cared. Um, uh, so I, then I kind of fell into this rabbit hole that I think a lot of the women here today have experienced where you just kind of tumble down and you just, you can't believe what you're seeing. Like women are trying to explain that men who claim to be women, still, they're just still just men and they pose the same risks as every other man. And most, significant, most significantly, all the rights that women and feminists have fought for for the last 100 years, which have been developed to protect women from discrimination on the basis of sex, those rights were just being ex exchanged with this weird concept of gendered identities. Um, so after having had a few encounters with uh, trigger happy teenagers and really easily insulted 60 year old men. Uh, I realized that this is actually a really significant problem because it's not possible to have a, a public debate uh, about the consequences of replacing an objective definition of sex with this subjective definition of, you know, this weird concept like gendered identities. Just um, and then I realized it was the same problem. Well, at least the way I saw it, it seemed like it was the same problem in every industrial country. Like in Britain, lesbians were saying men can't be lesbians. 
And there was like a demonized lesbian in every country. Uh, and in Norway, that lesbian was Tonja Jevjon. She's a lesbian artist, um, writer and, and musician. Uh, and uh, they, people were just call, comparing her to like um, uh, gen, somebody calling for genocide. Um, well, anyway, because it's such an, it's a, the way I saw it, the way I see it, it's like it's um, the changes to the understanding of what sex and biology and gender is. Uh, it's happening on two fronts. One is legal and one is cultural. So I got together with Tony Evian and then all the women I could find that was aware of the situation. And we made two different platforms to approach this problem in order to kind of try to sort of force some space in so that we could have a proper discussion. Uh, one of those uh, was a platform, is a platform called The Matriarch. Uh, it's a platform where women are invited to make anonymous statements where they can be as unfiltered as they want to, where they can um, be as angry as they want to, uh, and as clear and, and try to find the words to describe how they experience uh, being reduced to a feeling that a man can have. And then the other approach was promoting the work of uh, Women's Declaration International and this incredible tool, the women's de the, the, their declaration on women's sex-based rights. Uh, so I have three, we have, well, I manage three social media accounts. One is for WDI Norway, one is for the matriarch, and one is my personal account. Um, and then for the legal, the legal aspects, this kind of WDI approach, we have contacted politicians. The video you're seeing in the background now. We went to the cultural and equality ministers open meeting for the, the Labour Party's gay, gay network. And we formulated a very specific question to her, asking her in light of how women's rights include lesbian rights and women's rights are based on biological sex. Would she, um, would she clarify that lesbians don't have a penis uh, and work to um, uh, ensure that women, lesbian women's rights uh, were upheld in her new position as an equality minister. And her answer was just bizarre. She says, not only does she not share the, the belief that biological sex is relevant, but she even warned us not to approach this as some kind of some kind of feminist issue. So she didn't answer our question at all. She straight out said that she was willing to ignore women's human rights in order to push forward with this with an identity politics that literally erases women's rights. So that's uh, the kind of legal approach that we've done. Uh, and then on the cultural approach, uh, basically I've let Tony Evian, the lesbian artist, artist, have free reign on my on this platform, the matriarch platform. Um, and then last year they proposed to include uh, gendered identities as a protected characteristics or not even protected characteristics because in Norway we don't protect characteristics in Norway we protect groups we've have this we've developed this completely bizarre approach where our discrimination laws are not there in order to ensure that nobody is discriminated against to you know to to have to be able to enjoy the same universal rights as everybody else no, in Norway, we have created the system where groups of people have specific rights depending on what kind of group they belong to, um, which is a very different approach than what I understand both England and uh, the UN are doing in terms of discrimination laws. Uh, and in this scenario, in the way that we have it here in Norway, because, it, because it's based on which group you belong to. Women are 
not considered a group that is, you know, that that needs protection because we're not a minority. Uh, and uh, and a heterosexual man can, with one statement of saying that he's a woman, change group from being the most privileged person, you know, belonging to the most privileged group in the world. If you're following this kind of group mentality from being the most privileged person, you know, group in the world to becoming both a sexual minority, a gender minority. And then in Norway, uh, the gender kind of gurus, they consider themselves being belonging to an indigenous people. So they kind of get from one statement, they become like this three, <clears throat> yeah, this, uh, this uh, thrice protected, thrice, vulnerable group, even though, of course, they are still men, you know, men from the richest country in the world. <laughs> it's just bizarre. Anyway, very quickly after the law that introduced gender identity into the hate crime laws, um, well, I warned them and I said, you can't, you can't in in introduce this concept because it is per definition a subjective belief. And if we introduce subjective beliefs into our laws, um, we are essentially reintroducing blasphemy laws. And we know that these laws will be um, exploited by these activists because they are desperate. They are already desperately trying to sue women for hate speech and for harassment uh, just by making basic statements about what biology is and what sexes and what women's rights are. And of course, they started immediately to collect all our statements, all my statements, both from the WDI Norway account, my personal account, and then the matriarch accounts, resulting in a report now consisting of such an, a massive amount of tweets that it's, it's, it's it's just it's just insane. Every single statement that I've made for the last year are now being investigated by the police as a potential hate crime. It's uh, insane. It's just also bizarre because, you know, a lot of our tweets are really funny. <laughs> We're not allowed to have any sense of humor, apparently. Like women are not supposed, are not allowed to be funny. Like Tonya has written some tweets that are just like hilarious. Like <laughs> we're laughing so much about, you know, uh, I mean, and also it's very serious. She's basically just saying again and again and again, a lesbian can't have a penis. And it's just, it's uh, harassment to allow lesb men to claim they are lesbians. But we're not supposed to be funny. We're not supposed to be, you know, clever. We're not allowed to be anything. And at the same time, our equality minister has participated in satire movies portraying women as birthing people, being impregnated by farts. I'm not kidding. Like that's one of the satire movies that our equality minister has been a part of. Um, but anyway, this, uh, this, um, this case will be uh, very important uh, regardless of what the outcome is. Uh, I have essentially been running a campaign. I'm trying to remind, you know, I'm reminding an audience, especially an audience of women, that women are female, we have human rights. Those rights are developed for a reason and they have a specific function and purpose. And that purpose is to mitigate the risks and um, uh, the risks surrounding being a member of the female sex of the human population. Uh, and you, to replace those laws with laws uh, pertaining to men's ideas, something that men can fantasize about. It means that we, we will be forced to, uh, to accept men's personal convictions, regardless of whether or not we believe in them. And women must have the right to denounce men's convictions, no matter what those convictions are, but especially if those convictions are about what a woman is and what a woman should or should not do. So that is, yeah, basically a rundown of my situation or our situation as it has developed in Norway.